Hey there folks. In the last tutorial, we set up a gateway for handling socket IO communication between this here server application we've been working on and multiple clients, which will connect to the server via socket IO client application. Today, we'll add some methods which log when a socket IO client connects to or disconnects from our server. Finally, we'll connect with a client which in our case will be Postman and confirm that it's connecting and disconnecting from our server. In subsequent videos, we'll actually make this connection via the socket IO client library for browser side JavaScript. And we'll add this to our React application and make connections. As a reminder, if you'd like to follow along this tutorial, you can just clone or deget this repository today. We're on lecture nine, so you can just clone branch 08 to be up to date with us or the master branch. And also I have some getting started instructions if you want to get the repository with the, without the history using dgit. So the first thing I want to do is open up our application and make sure you have the polls folder, polls gateway file opened up, which we worked on last time. And then I will start the application with npm run start in the root of the project. And make sure everything works. Looks like Docker was working and we're connected. So then I'll just close the terminal so it gets out of our way. Now to apply methods to handle something when a client connects or disconnects, we can make use of some functionality provided to us by NestJS's platform socket IO combined with NestJS WebSockets packages or modules. And what we can actually import are two interfaces that are called on gateway connection. There it is. And the other one is called on gateway disconnect. There it is as well. So let's save to format that. And then we can implement those methods or interfaces in addition to on gateway init. I think it's weird that it's called on gateway connection and then on gateway disconnect, but you know, whatever. I wasn't in the room when they were naming these. Now our class is not valid because it does not implement these interfaces. And so what I'm going to do is hit command period and say, implement the on gateway connection interface and then do the same thing for the on gateway disconnect interface. You can see that two methods were created. One is for handling the disconnect and the other is for handling connection. And again, we get these methods fired by the socket IO package for NestJS, which is installed in package.json should be this one combined with the NestJS WebSockets together, these two that give us the ability to fire, handle connect, and handle disconnect. Let's actually cut these. I don't like the order. And let's put them here. And then I want connection to be above disconnect because it happens first. I guess it doesn't really matter that much. As you can see, these methods will receive a client and possibly some arguments in the case of handle connection. This client will actually be a socket IO client, but because these methods need to work for generic web sockets, it's just defining the client as any. However, we can replace this with the socket from the socket IO library, since we know we're using socket IO. And then I can get rid of these arguments because I won't use them. And we can apply socket here as well. Now this client has information about the actual client on the browser side, for example, or maybe another server, but let's just suppose it's our react application. So it will have their ID and some other information about how they connected. However, we also get access to this namespace or WebSocket server inside of our polls gateway. And that is provided to us by NestJS. And it is done so by adding a field into our class. 
and this field will be decorated with an at WebSocket server decorator. So let's add at WebSocket server. If I could spell, and it's this one. And then we invoke it because it's a decorator. And we're just going to call this IO and give it a type of namespace from socket IO. And then let's save this. Now you may say, what is namespace? Namespace is what we've defined here in our socket gateway. And this gives us access to a namespace of a socket IO server. And let me show you what that looks like in socket IO's documentation. So here we are in the socket IO documentation under the namespace section. And so a namespace is kind of a subfield or part of a server and it has several methods. So for example, it can give us the name, which was polls. It can give us access to all of the sockets that connected. Whereas in our handler in the code, we only have access to the individual socket that connected. The namespace can give us access to all of the sockets. Furthermore, a namespace allows us to use something called to a room, which means we can send a message to a narrower group of clients. So you might have a million clients connected, let's just say for example, but you only want 50 of them to receive a message. So you could assign those 50 clients to a particular room and send events to that. And furthermore, you can emit events. That's what emit is and get all of the sockets. So it just gives us access to this particular namespace. And importantly, when we emit an event with a namespace, it sends it to all clients. However, if I go back into handle connection here and I was to do something like client dot emit, uh, that's wrong, sorry. Let's do client lowercase dot emit. If I was to do this, it would send the message to all other connected clients other than this one that is received in this method. So basically it's a message to all other clients. Whereas if I do IO, I guess I should say this dot IO, meaning this IO we just brought in. If I do this, then it will send it to all clients, including myself. So let's get rid of all this. So with this IO defined as a namespace, I actually want to go into handle connection and log both the client that connected and all of the currently connected clients. So if the first client connects and then a second client connects, this would give us the ID of this client and then all of the clients. So we will see how this looks. I will get access to all of the sockets connected to the server with this.io.sockets. And then I will log the total number of sockets connected by accessing the sockets.size. Then I'll also log, actually before, I'll log the current client that's connected with their client.id. We'll do something very similar and handle disconnect. We will log the actual client that's disconnecting and then log the remaining number of clients. And then also later on, we'll remove this client from the polls database, but I don't want to go that far right now in this tutorial. So for the remainder of the tutorial, I actually kind of want to introduce you to how you can work with WebSocket servers with Postman. That's not a very common use case I've seen. And so this would have been useful to me. So I hope it's useful to you. Let's open Postman. So I have a couple of clients already created. I'll save them and start from scratch so that you know how this works. So you could just go to new here within any workspace and then say, create a WebSocket request. Then you'll want to go to this here. And instead of using raw sockets, you'll want to use socket.io. And then you can go into settings and set the client version. We're going to be using version four. So make sure you set it to that. And I'll click save here. And then you can save it to a workspace. So I already have one called Ranker Workspace. So I'll just save it to here. And let's call it uh, Socket IO Client 3 since I already have one and two. And I have one and two because I'm sure I'll forget something here. Great. And then the next thing you'll want to do is add the URL for the WebSocket server. Now I'm just going to go to one of these and copy it. 
Remember that our WebSocket server or our Nest.js server is at localhost 3000. So I have a variable here that says WebSockets colon slash slash. So instead of HTTP, we use WebSockets. And maybe there was an issue with using localhost. So I actually put the IP address of localhost, which is 127.0.0.1. The port will still be port 3000. So let's add this over to client three. And let's actually try connecting right now. And as you can see, it shows add event listeners and it shows connected. So let's go back and look at our logs inside of our application. Let me open that terminal that was running. And you can see that a WebSocket client with this ID was connected. And this is what IDs for WebSockets look like. And it says one connected socket. Now let's go and connect one of the other ones. Maybe let's go to client two here and then I'll connect. Now the settings here are pretty much the same. And except that this one's going to be listening to two events, I'll show you that shortly, but it's connected. And so let's go back to the terminal. And if we go to the terminal, we see that Q8HV blah, blah, blah is connected and that two sockets are connected. And heck, let's just do one more. Test client one, connect, all right. And you see three sockets are connected. Now let's try removing this guy who's client one. And you can do that by clicking disconnect up here. And our terminal shows that that same ID has been disconnected and that we're down to two sockets. So that's pretty cool. Now I just want to maybe emit an event to all of the clients just to show you how you would set that up in Postman. So what I want to do is when a client connects, I want to this dot emit, actually this dot IO dot emit an event and let's just call it hello. And it will send a payload. Maybe they'll send their client ID. So let's say hello from and then the second argument could be an object. It could just be a string, but we'll just put a string, which is their client.id. Like it's spell. And there we go. So when we say emit, that means this socket is also going to receive the message and all of the other sockets. So let's save and let's go back to Postman. Let's go back to Postman now. And let's see, it looks like when I restarted the server, these all disconnected. And when you're in the browser, it'll actually usually automatically reconnect, but that's another issue. So I just created that event called hello on the server. So how do we listen to that? What you would do in this client is you would go to this events here, the one at the top, and you would type the event hello. You could give a description and then I'll usually say listen on connect so that when this client connects, it will also hear back that initial emitted event. So let's add that and save. And then these other two clients already had that. So you can see it already has hello. In fact, it has one called goodbye. Let's not do that for now. It's a little too much. And let's get rid of goodbye. And so let's connect all these guys. So let's connect client one. And you can see when it's connected, it says it's listening to the hello event and the goodbye event. Did I not get rid of goodbye here? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't save it first. Let's disconnect. Let's save it. Let's try connecting one more time. Let's clear the messages. Well, that's kind of weird. I don't know why it's still listening to that. Let's go to client two and let's clear the messages and try connecting. Very good. And then client three. And this one's only listening to hello. So maybe something kind of buggy with these event listeners. Let's go look at our logs. And you can see that it's still showing the clients connected. So these guys should see a message for hello. So let me try to figure out what's wrong. So I came back to the app and I noticed what's wrong is the event is called hello space from. That was really ridiculous. So maybe let's say hello. And then the message will be from. And then we'll use some string interpolation to say from client ID as the message. Let's see if this will work now.
back in Postman, I have client one and I have it set up to listen on connect. And for some reason, it saves the listeners down here. So if you want to delete it, you can just hover here and delete it. I guess I didn't quite understand that. I'm new to this. So let's connect. And you can see that it connected. It's listening to hello. And then it got a message that it connected itself. Now let's connect with client two. And you see it receives hello from itself, which is D7R. And client one should also get this message. And you get from D7R. So we can see that client one can receive messages when client two sends an event and then the server responds. That's all for today. Next time, we're going to work on adding an authorization guard for our polls gateway, similar to how we did for the controller. I look forward to seeing you then.